Welcome back to Kempasa National. My name is Christina Allen and I'm your host and we're talking with Nancy Yusuf. Nancy is the Chief Corporate Development Officer for Souls for Souls, a nonprofit organization that collects slightly used shoes, yep. coats and partnerships and distributes, distributes them throughout the United States and abroad. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, so in a situation like that, I remember my daughter's schools here in Metro would have a bin yep. and we, we donated slightly used soccer shoes, um, tennis shoes, um, whatever, that they just outgrew. Yes. Um, and then what happens? They get sent to, do they get cleaned up? And then how do you know where to go? They come to our warehouse. Um, we've got a warehouse here in Old Hickory, Tennessee. Our main warehouse is actually in Wadley, Alabama. Okay. But it comes through here and it's sorted. And actually we get community groups that come in, so businesses like a Dollar General or whoever will bring their community engagement group, their HR will set it up, and they'll come in and help us sort these shoes. So there's an opportunity for corporations not only sponsor yes. um, and be participate, but come in and volunteer hours. Yes, like a right. day of caring or whatever it is. Yes, so they can come in, do their volunteer hours. They'll help us sort the shoes, pair them if they need to be paired, because sometimes they're yeah. all over the place. <laughs> Um, and we, we, we will grade them. We'll say, okay, these are great, no problem, they can go in, or these need to be cleaned up, or you know, these are so out of shape and so terrible that they need to really be repurposed yes. in a different way. Okay. And so we'll sort all that out and send them to wherever they need to be going, whether it's local. We never distribute to schools or other organizations that need product used shoes. Okay. So we get new shoes from corporations. Just outdated um, product lines. Outdated that or overruns or um, just excess inventory, whatever it may be. <laughs> we, we get a variety, definitely six or 13 yeah. on the other yeah, end, right? Yeah. Um, so whatever it is, those are the ones that always go into the distribution, the free distribution where we give it away to folks. The things that go into micro, micro enterprise is the gently used product, and that's what they're able so to resell. So are these 1,200 nonprofits, that, 1200 mm -hmm. nonprofits that you work with globally, um, are they in very high, uh, poverty countries? Yes, all over. So a shoe would be better than nothing for them. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Also goes towards disaster relief, for oh, example. Okay. So we may not be primary or first responders, but after the math, aftermath, when you know everything settles down, people need to replenish on clothing and shoes and those type of things, and you don't think about that, but we come in and help distribute there too. So we just did a distribution in Bahamas. So even with the Bahamas, that's a great so you will take in all these shoes, ship them in, and people come and just mm -hmm. pick up pairs. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to be part of that ever? I have. Oh, what a feeling. It, it is probably the most powerful experience anyone can go through. And you know, we go through, not only do we put shoes on the feet of these folks, whether it's adults or children or whoever it is that needs it, we sometimes even are able to wash their feet and just give them this sense of dignity and pride by providing these shoes and clothing. I mean, you know, shoes have such an impact on people's lives. You can go to school, you can get a job, you can do so much, and we don't think about it and take it for granted almost every day, right? Well, and I think um, we do take it for granted. Yeah. I mean, when I look at I know when my children were younger, they outgrew them, so mm -hmm. they were still good shoes, mm -hmm. and those are easy. Yes. And now they, you know, they get worn down yeah. or, or what, and we always donate them, and, and um, usually to goodwill, but yeah. now I'll start thinking yeah. of separating that. But I think it's important to understand that the poverty in the United States, um, a lot of people, you know, I think 12, 13% is really poverty. Yes. That that going into those communities is just as impactful as going to Honduras. Absolutely. And when you take care of our own, um, there has to be a balance in both. And I'm really happy that I did not realize you did a lot within the United Absolutely. States. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I, so I mean, because I've seen these, these kids and, and I've seen giving them coats and stuff. Yeah. I participated. So that is very important. So congratulations. And continue to and only 12 years old, this organization. Yeah, That's it's, it's incredible. Do you have a lot of connection within um, um, your global travels, I mean, prior to coming to working there, do you have able to do connections with your other businesses? Yes, um, you know, whenever there was an opportunity, if I was traveling abroad and there was a distribution opportunity or a company that we may have worked with, because I was on the board, I was able to connect with those companies or do a distribution. Your ears would be open yes, and always. Always about always, collaboration. Always. So as, let me talk a little bit more about your religion. Um, as the, with the Coptic Orthodox um, Christian religion, and there's about 25,000, you yeah. say, members. How many, is it ch churches, you call it? Yes. Okay, how many churches are there? Do so you know? we have about 12 churches. Um, in Middle Tennessee? In 
Tennessee. greater Nashville, okay. Middle okay. Tennessee area, yes. Um, actually, we probably have more beyond greater Nashville. So and of those members, are a lot of them um, more assimilated or are they more newly arrivals? Newly arrivals, so. Um, and which means refugee usually? Yeah, so, well. Uh, Not necessarily? Refugee could be asylum, okay. could be a variety of immigration reasons. Um, you know, with some of the civil unrest that had happened in the last few years, we really saw a big uptick in folks immigrating here um, and seeking asylum. Okay. Uh, political asylum, obviously, or, or religious persecution. And so the, the community is, 12 churches, really the leadership are the priests. Um, they are not mostly assimilated. They're mostly new 10 to 15 years and younger yeah. here in the United States. And for most of them, this is their first stop. Um, and so we try to really create programs where we help educate on the city, on you know experiences here, government relations, community relations, how they can be active. First and foremost, probably educating on the language. Yes. Cultural differences is really important as well. Um, and I, and I, I didn't realize that there was that many, um, that percentage was of Egyptians that were Coptic Orthodox mm -hmm. versus Arabic yeah. versus Muslims. Yeah. Um, and and shame on me with making that assumption. <laughs> but you know, and, and it's meeting people like you that have taking me and my mindset to another level going, oh, you know, holy moly, that's a lot. Yeah. Especially here. And, yeah, um, ten, almost 10 million people, right? And the assumptions that um, myself might have made um, not knowing that. Yeah. So again, um, your involvement in meeting you demystifies a lot yeah. of the unknown. Mm -hmm. But you see a lot more professional Egyptians Absolutely. coming to Nashville. And they're taking, I would think, the Egyptian community overall into whether whatever religion they are, um, into another a mindset as well. Absolutely, I, I just see how many Vanderbilt employees. Yes, I mean they, they're yes. from all over the world, yes. and, and and yeah, and these are our neighbors yeah. now. Yeah, um, so that's always exciting. Um, tell me a little bit more about your other involvements, your sister cities involvement. Exactly yeah. what sister cities of Nashville? I know we've interviewed them in the past, which is a culture exchange yes. from students to adults being yes. able to travel. Tell me a little bit about that. Sister cities, I've really been involved with um, since the day I moved here. Actually, um, it was one of the first organizations I sought out because of my background, because of my work, and just my general interest in the global community, um, I really sought out in organizations that created that sense of international for me, right? So Sister Cities does do a lot of cultural exchanges, whether it's at a student level or an adult level, it's really just creating this idea of spreading knowledge through culture and globalization. And it's amazing how many native Tennesseans, Nashvilleans, Americans are so into traveling. So and much so. Just so wanting, much so. Soaking it all up. It's amazing. And, you know, one of the things that they do that's very cool is they have an annual fundraiser, and it's, it's not a promotion for it, but called World of Friendship. And they really bring together community um, restaurants that are global to host and cater these events. But they also have a auction. And so I bring it up because we participated in the auction to give away an Egyptian dinner. And oh. we actually just hosted it uh, this past Sunday night in collaboration with the movie Free Trip so, to yeah, Egypt. Let's talk about that with the yes. time remaining. Tell me about the Free Trip to Egypt that um, premiered at the Bell Court. Yes. Um, but it was a uh, tell me about the film. So Free Trip to Egypt was really a film. a film, almost a documentary, about five people's experience. They were sought out on the street. A guy stood there and said, hey, you want to go to Egypt for free. I will pay for everything. And of course, you know, you got to see all the people that were like, like no, no <laughs> I would never do that. Or yes, I would do that. And then they ultimately got this group of five people together and ha followed them through their experience with a variety of families and people, all different people in so Egypt. So they just opened up their eyes opened to the, up their what eyes. they thought Egypt was and the beauty it really yes. is, which you know yes. because you travel there a yes. lot. Yes, and I uh, am super passionate about Egypt, as you, as you know, and I, and I often tell people I, I wear the fact that I'm Egyptian, although I wasn't born there um, and lived there for only a couple of years as an adult, but really as a badge of honor because it is what has made me who I am today and the culture and the people of my parents. It's, it's just amazing. And this, this movie really brought it all together and showed 
the breadth of people that are there. I mean, 90 million people. There are so many diverse people. Wow. There's a girl, you know, that rides motorcycles, a family that was super traditional and full niqab and all the, the, the clothes, um, you know, a, And then a the mixed Americans marriage, who had the never Americans. really seen yes. a Jewish, Jewish Christian, Christian that are coming yes. from the United States there. Yes. But the panel discussion was pretty exciting, too. It was really great. Two discussions, one with the director. We were lucky to have him here in town, Tarek Munib. And then we had a community panel. And the community panel just really highlighted the voices in Nashville that are speaking to engagement in the community and the global mindset. The thing with the film, um, I don't know if it aired more than once, was the, the theater was filled with um, Egyptians, Muslims, the was, same people you kind of yes. see everywhere else. Yes. How do we open up to the broader how do we get the people who are so unaware of the beauty of Egypt or my family from Mexico? Yes. I live there, yeah. my mom's from there, a huge family yeah. there, and it's not all cartel, you know what I mean? I so. think we keep t sharing our stories. We keep telling people, we keep reaching out and holding our hand out. You know, for me, so many people say to me, you're the first Egyptian yeah. I've ever met. Right? Yeah. And for me, I introduce myself as Egyptian and I stop there, regardless of what the background is, the religion, or any of that. It really is just. Defines you. You know, telling people about the culture, explaining what we, what we are, inviting them to come over for dinner, or go with me on a trip, or whatever it is. We just keep spreading it. Well, I think it's great that what you're doing is, again, I use the word a lot, but demystifying what oh. people might think of what Egypt is versus what it really sure. is. And But you live in Nashville. Yeah. And Nashville is changing. It is. But in a beautiful, um, inclusive, different foods, different um, festivals, yes. and our children are going to grow up that way. Oh, yeah. And so that's exciting. So thank you very much for thank being on the show, Nancy. Thank you so much. Um, again, join us each week as we talk about our global community, our Hispanic community, and the beauty of the changes that are going on in Middle Tennessee at Que Pasa Nashville each week. Muchas gracias, and we'll see you next time.